Hey, what's up? David here with Dino Video Fix and welcome back to another exciting video. That's right, I am exciting towards my catchphrase. <laughs> I know, I'm just trying to mix it up, but today's video will be kind of exciting. So we're going to do another plugin review. And this plugin review is going to be Heat Distortion by Video Copilot. So yeah, so what I have here is a Jet Strike and I'm using Element 3D, so I'll just open that up. So we got Element Scene Setup, and this is my Jet Strike. Um, it's a Joint Strike number two, and what I did was I used the Root Control. So check this out. Yep. So I used that Root Control to get the exhaust. Uh, nozzle uh, at 90 degrees and I only use that um, I didn't use the landing gear or the missiles or the fans or etc so yeah that's what I did that is so cool that's all I did for element 3d so yep and I what I have is some lights uh, I've got an ambient light and three parallel lights and I've got uh, just some cloud footage as the background and some color correction. Yeah, so if we open a new adjustment layer, so I'm going to hit Control Alt Y and I'm going to call this hit enter heat, heat distortion. Yep, and I'm going to go to video copilot heat distortion. And I'm just going to set this to half res. So we can see we've got some heat distortion going. So this is the fire noise pattern. So let's change the distort amount up. So we get some really interesting distortion happening. We've got heat amount. That's the like these blurred amounts. And heat bias. And that either that controls whether you want your heat to be on or on, on or off. Um, we got noise scale. We can bring that down. We got some really interesting noise happening. We got noise speed. We can turn up the speed. Um, what's good about this actually? It's self animated. So um, if I hit to quarter res, and if I hit zero it's self animated so we don't even have to worry about any keyframes or anything so we can just worry about the noise speed and uh, it will self animate so that's really cool feature that um, Andrew Kramer did uh, we got wind speed we can adjust the speed of the wind and wind direction we can adjust the direction and if I set this to noise pattern we can see here what kind of noise um, pattern we're getting. So it's kind of like this fractal noise that it's using to distort the uh, layer. So that's fire. So let's go to smoke. And if we look at the noise pattern for this, we can see here it's like this circular uh, and a larger scale pattern so yeah it's it's pretty cool I mean like um, if you want to just use a different pattern and we got incendiary and that's I think this one looks a bit more realistic uh, if you just play with the settings a bit so we look at the noise pattern yeah we got this really interesting uh, noise and shapes that we have geometry I would say that's a better word um, yeah so I'm gonna set this back to file and render all and what's good about this you can draw a mask on the adjustment layer so if I just draw a mask just around this um, heat area hit F feather it out and we can see here now 
the heat distortion is only focused on this area. So that's a really handy tip that um, I highly recommend because sometimes uh, you just want your heat distortion not to be on the whole layer, just in a specific area. And yeah, that's really cool. So that's pretty much it for the heat distortion. Um, yeah, um, if we use the turbulent displace effect instead, so if I go to distort turbulent displace, um, bring the size down, bring the amount down, maybe the amount up. Yeah, um, we can get some effect with this, but it's not as great as the heat distortion. But uh, if you don't have heat distortion, um, you can always use the turbulent displace. Um, but I highly recommend um, heat distortion. So yeah. Oh, and uh, a quick tip if you're all wondering how I did this um, fiery jet look. So what I did was I duplicated the element 3D layer and set the rendering output to illumination. So right there. And then I added a fast blur. Oh, let me solve this first. I added a fast blur and I set this to vertical. I set the exposure up to about nine. And then I added a linear wipe just to get that top bit off and then added a glow. And then I set the transfer mode to additive. So it looks like this on normal. And once I set this to add, it looks pretty cool. And it's all lined up perfectly as well. So yeah. And for the element 3D layer, so this is what it looks like by itself. I use the exhaust rotation to 100%. That controls the angle for the exhaust and the nozzle to about 90%. So that's how wide or yeah, how wide it's going to be. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the heat distortion effect. Um, it's a very um a handy plugin um it's a small plugin but uh you can really do some interesting effects with this plugin so that's pretty much it guys so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i hope you learned interesting techniques that you can use for your own creations please give a like subscribe comment down below um i really do appreciate the support guys and until next time i will see you in the next video